On the morning of August 29, 1993, Silesia Gethers set out alone from Orange, New Jersey, on a 600-mile drive to visit her family in South Carolina. In preparation for the journey, she had bought a cellular phone, carefully mapped out a route, and left detailed information with a number of friends. One of the last people she spoke with was her close friend and teacher, Anne Moore. The day before the trips, I asked her, did you get your car checked? And she said, yes, I did. So Lisa, she's just like one of my little girls. She's like a daughter, full of life. So Lisa gave me a sheet with all of her vital statistics. I mean, she had everything on the sheet, everything. Her bank account numbers and who's her power of attorney, her lawyer's name. So we made a big joke out of it and we said to her, you act as if you're not coming back. And she said, you never know. Get someone at a gas station, take a look at it. So Apparently, the way I understand it, this lady noticed okay, something very you. odd about her automobile okay. Okay. and that the accelerator was sticky. And she talked with a trooper up there in Virginia. He suggested that she go to a service station. Being a female and alone, on a long journey, she felt secure with the phone. Across the border in North Carolina, Nash County EMS dispatcher Ray Dixon took the call. The lady told me she had a car that was running away with her on I-95, and we just started trying to think of things to do, see what we could do to either get her stopped or get some help to her. Turn the switch off. The biggest thing we worried about was her having a wreck and getting killed or running into somebody at 120 miles an hour. Where are you at now? She was afraid she was going to kill other people. She seemed more afraid of that than really what was going to happen to her. North Carolina State Trooper Frank Moody was three miles ahead on the opposite side of the highway when he heard the report of the runaway car. I'm in pursuit of the I was expecting the car to come up from my rear. So initially, I was trying to move traffic from the left lane over to the right lane. But that's an impossible task. As soon as they got by me, they'd move right back to the left side. Hey, do you see the highway patrol? I don't see nobody. There's always cars. I don't want to hurt nobody. Hey, what happens when you mash on the brake? You didn't feel like there was a whole lot that you could really do. Just really didn't know how it would end up. I was on the emergency strip and just sort of waited for the car to come along. Well, it just blew by me, just like a bullet. And if it hits anything, it will disintegrate. I had my blue lights and sirens and my alternating headlights going when I overtook it. I was leading it down I-95, and we were doing pretty good. And our goal was to try to run it out of gas. Things got a little congested, so we moved over to the emergency strip. So I was nervous throughout this ordeal. You already have a feeling it's not going to work, and I was just afraid that we were going to get to a point where we were going to have a serious crash. When someone did turn over into our path, there was just nowhere for me to go, and I had to break. I was just waiting for her to hit me.
not lifting his arm. She gave me a phone number for her mother. If anything happens to me, that's my mother's number. So what's your name? Alicia. I figured on that she probably thought she might be killed. We're going to try to clear out this left lane so we can get When Sergeant Larry Davis got involved, Celicia's car had been accelerating out of control for more than 45 minutes. There was a patrol car in front of her at one point, and she kept calling on, on her cellular phone and saying, please make the car get out of the way. I'm going to run into the rear of it, and it's going to explode. And uh, so I, I elected to just try to continue south and clear the lanes, and, and hopefully it would run out of gas. I was up to around 100 to 105 miles per hour, and I could see her coming. I held some keys up and, and I told her to turn the ignition off. I could read her lips and she was saying it would not turn off. It won't turn off. Places that most people would not have attempted. She's a very good driver. I've lost her. She, she got out of the range of the phone. I heard the phone with her. Hello? Can you still hear me? If she had not called 911, we would have probably treated the thing as a chase. And at some point in time, we would have had to make a decision to take her out. Nearly an hour had passed when Trooper B.J. Walters joined in the pursuit of the runaway car. Basically, you, you are helpless. There's nothing you can do to stop it other than run some type of roadblock to slow the vehicle down with another one. But it can cause all of you to wreck. As the traffic increased, Trooper Anthony Parrish passed Alicia to try to clear the lane for her car. And I kept my eye on her in my rearview mirror, and she was catching me like I was sitting still. There was cars in front of me and to my right, and I had nowhere to go. When I saw her go airborne, I saw all the vehicles that were heading north, and I knew she was going to wipe out two or three of them. straight to the vehicle and thinking in my mind that she was killed. The first thing that came out of her mouth was, how many people did I kill? She had to have an angel on her shoulder to protect her when she wrecked that car. In the 64 minutes Lucia's car was speeding out of control, it crossed almost the entire state of North Carolina. Nine people were involved in the collision, but amazingly, no one was seriously injured. I remember hearing in the background as they put me in the ambulance, they go, oh, she has to be dead. She's got to be dead. There's no way she lived through that. No way. That wasn't too comforting to hear that, but it was good to know that I was alive to hear him say that. 21-year-old Celicia Geddes was treated for minor injuries and released from the hospital that same evening. Had she not had the seatbelt on, she would have been killed. There's no, there's no doubt about that. Roll that around. With the love and support of friends and family, Celicia has gone on with her life. <laughs> Why would you just cook it? Every time I think about the accident, I think of how close she came to death. It really made me ill. I mean, I gotta see you again tomorrow? Of course. She's a joyous child. Lisa's here all the time. 
Of course, she's always looking for something to eat and want you to cook. Yes. She was always a very spiritual person, but now I think she's even more spiritual than she was before. Six months after the accident, Celicia graduated from nursing school. You have always been Those state troopers, I'd like to thank them for working so hard the way they did to save me. A subsequent inspection of Celicia's car revealed that in addition to a mechanical problem with her accelerator, a loose bolt in the transmission prevented her from being able to shift into neutral. No one knows why she could not shut off the ignition that day. I'd have to say she's a good driver. I think this episode has cured any aspirations she's had of being a race car driver. <laughs> I don't care! I do not want to race. <laughs> I do not want to race. No, no, no. Ah! I crashed on 